Recently, we made a video about Israel's Iron Beam anti-missile laser defense system. In addition to Israel, Russia has already put the Parisvet laser system on combat duty. Of course, the United States, the birthplace of Star Wars, could not stay away from the laser arms race. The first prototypes of laser weapons didn't appear today or even yesterday. They began to be developed literally with the creation of the first lasers. That is back in the 1960s. But only now will American scientists and designers be able to put laser weapons into practice. According to Vice Admiral Thomas Moore, who oversees the Navy's programs for building underwater and surface systems, the use of laser weapons on American warships will become widespread in the next 10 to 15 years. Initially, laser installations on ships will be used exclusively for defense. In the United States, a large number of companies are working on the creation of laser weapons. Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman Corporation, as well as DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency of the U.S. Department of Defense. All of them have achieved some success in this field. For the first time, American admirals spoke about plans to equip fleet warships with modern laser weapons back in the early 2010s. At the same time, the first tests of the developed laser systems on board warships from the U.S. Navy took place. For example, not so long ago in the summer of 2017, there were tests of the LAWS, laser weapon system, laser system installed on board the USS Ponce, on the bow of which a prototype laser combat installation was installed back in August 2014, causing a great resonance in the media. This is the 38th destroyer from a series of 62 Arleigh Burke-class DDG destroyers planned for construction. The ship has been in service since November 9, 2002. Then, as part of the tests in the Persian Gulf, the U.S. military was able to hit targets aboard small moving boats and also shot down an unmanned aerial vehicle. The LAWS installation uses a solid-state infrared laser with an adjustable level of shot energy. A 30-kilowatt plant should be enough to defend against drones and small craft. At the same time, there are several modes, shot energy levels, both for blinding control systems and for causing physical damage to attackers. Among the advantages of this type of weapon is the low cost per shot, less than $1, which makes it attractive for fighting against low-budget projectiles, including custom-made ones. A further development of shipborne laser weapons is the Helios High Energy Laser with Integrated Optical Dazzler and Surveillance System developed by the well-known company Lockheed Martin. This is a fiber optic laser based on spectral combining technology where several individual lasers are combined to form a beam of increased power. In 2021, Helios was mounted on the same destroyer, USS Preble, for trial operation. Thus, the U.S. Navy has got the world's only unique combat laser installation for testing in real conditions. Since Lockheed Martin supplies the U.S. Navy with the Aegis combat information and control system for DDG destroyers and cruisers, there should be no problems pairing Helios with Aegis. Note that Helios is not only a means of destruction, but also a means of observation, which is actually reflected in the name of this system. Rear Admiral Ronald Boxel stated, Many people think that lasers are what shoot, but lasers are also a very good reconnaissance tool. That is, a sensor. As you approach a radar station, the radar's capabilities objectively deteriorate. As you get closer to a laser, it only gets better. The next step in the development of the Helios program is to reach a laser power of 150 kilowatts. The progress of the Helios program brings the U.S. Navy closer to the moment when American ships, with the help of a laser, can destroy Chinese and Russian anti-ship cruise missiles at the near edge of the kill zone in a flight. That is, in the zone in which anti-aircraft missiles lose their effectiveness. The moment of truth will come when the laser power reaches 500 kilowatts. In the future, it's laser weapons that are considered an effective defense against Russian and Chinese hypersonic missiles. The laser will be able to neutralize their main advantage, tremendous speed. Let this rocket fly at speeds of Mach 10 and Mach 20, changing its trajectory. For a laser beam with a speed of 10 million Machs, it would not be difficult to intercept such a target. Laser weapons have another important advantage over traditional anti-aircraft missiles. According to analysts, China and Russia are developing new tactics for the use of anti-ship missiles. Moscow and Beijing plan to launch more anti-ship missiles during a clash at sea than the self-defense systems of U.S. Navy ships can repel. 
That is, the purpose of such a bonsai attack is to force the American fleet to use up all its missiles and leave it absolutely defenseless for subsequent attacks. But laser weapons have immeasurably more ammunition than any anti-aircraft missile defense system. As long as the onboard power plant of the ship will work, the laser will shoot. That is, the ammunition is limited only by the capacity of the fuel tanks for diesel fuel. And if we're talking about a nuclear power plant, then the ammunition for laser weapons can be considered almost unlimited. But so far, this prospect is not for the next few years. There are still many unresolved issues. In particular, a laser of even a megawatt class during combat operation remains single channel on the target. That is, until it is detected, locked on, and fired a shot at a target, the laser cannot move on to hit the next target. Therefore, it's still too early to write off missile weapons. Anti-aircraft guided anti-missiles in the U.S. Navy will continue to be in demand for the foreseeable future. With ships, everything is clear. And what about the combat lasers that are planned to be placed on land and air vehicles? The Office of Naval Research of the U.S. Navy, as part of the Ground-Based Air Defense Directed Energy on the Move Mobile Laser Air Defense System for the U.S. Marine Corps, plans to develop a laser system for use on ground vehicles. Like the Naval Helios, the ground system is intended for close defense against unmanned aerial vehicles and missiles. The system is expected to be installed on a Humvee or Joint Light Tactical Vehicle JLTV, chassis. Back in February 2019 at the IDEX 2019 International Arms Exhibition in Abu Dhabi, Boeing demonstrated an experimental Boeing Laser Avenger device on an Avenger combat vehicle, which can effectively deal with small enemy drones. The ground-based air defense directed energy on the move system consists of a vehicle-mounted high-energy laser as well as a command, control, and communications facility, and a three-dimensional surveillance radar. Volumetric search radar detects unmanned aerial vehicles of interest and transmits information to the C-3 platform. The C-3 platform performs threat analysis and transmits radar information to the laser platform, which then locates and starts tracking the drone using a sensor system capable of operating around the clock. This then allows the C-3 platform to perform visual confirmation and aim point selection. If a decision is made to destroy, the laser is turned on and the target is hit by a laser beam. The expected laser power will be 30 kilowatts. Experts are considering two options for the development of this ground-based system. The first is an increase in laser power up to 50 kilowatts. The second option is to hit the target by combining several low-power lasers. If we talk about combat lasers installed on aircraft, then for now, the military sees them as an element of a directed infrared countermeasure system. This system is designed to protect aircraft and helicopters from homing man pads, manned portable air defense systems operating in the infrared range. The DIRCM system differs from conventional infrared countermeasure systems in that it tracks the threat and directs infrared energy towards it. DIRCM consists of a laser attack warning system, an integration unit, a processor, and laser turrets. The system is expected to be installed by 2025 on the C-17 Globemaster III, MC-130, CV-22, and CH-53E Super Stallion. As can be seen from the review of laser weapons, so far the U.S. military plans to use combat lasers only for defense purposes in the short and medium term, in the short term against drones and in the longer term against cruise missiles. The use of lasers as a means of attack still rests on an insoluble problem, the power of the laser beam. For now, the military dream of 150 kilowatts, and in the future, they dream of reaching the line of 500 kilowatts or 0.5 megawatts. If the laser beam on the target works for two seconds, it'll then transfer 1 million joules of energy or 10 to the sixth power joules to it. And one shell of the good old 127 mm Mark 45 artillery mount installed on Arleigh Burke class destroyers hits the target with an energy of 3 times 10 to the 12th power joules. That's 3 million times stronger. This is not to mention that the firing range of the installation is 30 to 35 kilometers. That is, the target is destroyed beyond the horizon. And the laser only works in the line of sight of the target. And this is a maximum of 15 kilometers. So the real Star Wars is on hold for the time being, for 15 years at least.